Dennis Campbell fans and welcome back to the Dude Cave. It is the 11th of October 2016. I'm Jason and you are watching the second episode of Comic Book Opinions. This is my video where I share with you thoughts on all things comic books. Today I'm going to be talking about DC's new range of books, The Young Animals. And I will also be looking at the first two books that have come out from this series. So without further ado, I think we all know what time it is. It's opinion time. So DC are absolutely killing it right now with the DC Rebirth range of books. They've also kind of trying to relaunch Vertigo and there's a lot of new books coming out from them, which are more kind of creator owned kind of titles. But there is a third line of books that they're bringing out and it's called a DC Young Animal. Now, originally when I first saw the name Young Animal, I just presumed it was a range of books for younger readers. And while I applauded that, it wasn't particularly anything I wanted to read. So I didn't I didn't really pay much attention. It did seem odd, some of the titles that were in the part of this range, thinking that they were for younger readers. But, you know, there are a lot of things these days that, you know, to me seem strange for younger, re younger people to be watching. But hey, that that's life in the 21st century. So I just kind of went on. Um, then I saw a couple of intriguing posters in my con book shop um, with some of the future titles. And I was like, I need to find out more about this young animal range. And I looked it up um, online and I saw that, in fact, this young animal line was a range of books for mature readers. And whereas Vertigo is now creator owned, that Gerard Way, who's in charge of the young animal line, wanted to get a home for the more unusual DC Comics characters um, that used to would be Vertigo, but with that line now being more credit owned titles, he wanted Young Animals to be that was going to be the vehicle for this. So that, that intrigued me. So I picked up from my comic shop, I got Doom Patrol, issue number one, which is the first book of the Young Animal line of books. It is written by Gerard Way. And... I read this, and now I going into this, I knew absolutely nothing about. Wow, well, I I knew a little bit, I but I'd never read Doom Patrol before. What little I knew, I'd even seen that Batman cartoon. I can never remember which way around it goes. Is it Brave and the Bold or Bold and the Brave? Whichever way it goes around, that that cartoon, I think I saw an episode with Doom Patrol, or maybe it was an issue with Justice League written by Jeff Johns that they had a cameo in. But somewhere I know I saw Doom Patrol before. But I'd never actually read the book, so I didn't really know that much about them and about the different characters that make up the team. So what I did know was I, uh, if I, uh, and I don't know if I've got this right, but I, that Grant Morrison had wrote the book in its heyday. But other than that, I knew nothing about Doom Patrol. So I picked it up, really having no expectations going into it, which is sometimes the best way to have to go into a comic book because. It sinks, it sinks or swims based on, you know, what's there in front of you rather than kind of the history of the book kind of influencing how you enjoy it or not. So, but it's not always possible to read it in that light, but it's great if you can get there. So anyway, I went into the book, no expectations, and this is the closest you're going to come to reading a Grant Morrison comic without him actually writing it. Gerard Way, you can see, has been very heavily influenced by Morrison. Um, the book is a whole load of crazy. I've never enjoyed being confused so much. Um, the thing that helps the book to work is the central character, Casey. She's an ambulance driver and she is a bit unusual. She, you know, people would call her weird, but she's just herself and she doesn't care what people think. And I really like that. I really uh, uh, admired that in the character. Um, in the way she is and she just carries on through life really oblivious to what people think of her which something I wish I could do more often so her character is really good and so instantly I was on board as we got to know her character more and more I was on board and the story she's the central story but around her there's all these strange events going on um so, yeah, so, like, we open up here, as you can see. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, nice double page spread there that kind of opens the book up. And um, it introduces the character of Casey, uh, this ambulance driver. 
but then the kind of the book like keeps going off on these strange kind of things where the art changes and the, the, you have this strange stuff going on and you kind of like what's going on here you don't really know um but all kinds of strange things are going on and like here's another another strange detour and you kind of like what the hell is going on here so you have these strange little things but then the book keeps coming back to Casey and to her adventures before going off into something strange so you have all this strange stuff that is confusing but at the core you've got Casey and that kind of makes the book work you get the impression through the book that events have been manipulated by some unseen presence um in, for example, like Casey and her partner, once they've been introduced, they get caught to this hit and run, but there's nobody there. And then this robot turns up and gets knocked down and he's in all these bits and pieces. And you kind of, like I say, you get the impression that they were meant to be there to witness this. So Casey collects the pieces and takes them home. And then her flatmate answers the door and her flatmate gets killed. And the person that killed her flatmate ends up moving in and replacing her flatmate. And Casey didn't like her flatmate that much anyway, so she's not really that bothered. And like I say, yeah, it sounds bizarre, um, but I enjoyed it. And uh, I think it's one of those books that you enjoy it. But like if you get to issue six and it's still not making sense, then you might drop, then you drop it. Because you, you, you hope as you go through the book and you get more of the story that all these random things that are going on around the central story are going to kind of start making sense and kind of fit in. And that when you go back to read this, like after um, after issue six, maybe, and you go back and reread it, and it I kind of will all make more sense. Uh, if it don't, then obviously it's going to be one of those books that you drop. But And this is where this book may be better to read and trade when you've got a big chunk of it that makes sense rather than in the individual segments. But yeah, I enjoyed this and was a great start to the Young Animal line of book. So last week they released the second book in the range and it is Shade, The Changing Deal. Um, it is written by Cecil Castellucci um, and with art by Marley Zarconi. And this book was the one book that I wasn't that I was going to give a miss. Then I read the synopsis for it and I was like, yeah, I like the sound of that. That sounds a bit, a bit different. I'm going to give that book a whirl. So the premise here is we have this alien called Loma. Uh, she's a bit lonely, a bit fed up with her life. So she tricked with this help of this other alien that she kind of basically seduces into it. She gets access to the coat of this poet that she's a big fan of. And this it's called the Madness Vest. And she gets access to this and she uses it to transport herself to Earth where there's this young girl who's comatose. And I, I, for the life of me, I cannot make, cannot, um, uh, Megan, the girl's name's Megan. I couldn't remember her name, but it's Megan. Um, and Megan is, is basically brain dead. They're gonna turn the machine off because she's not, she's not gonna wake up. And so um, Loma inhabits her body and kind of takes over. And She's kind of getting used to the body and to all these feelings and these sensations of being on Earth. But then there's also these flashbacks to, to Megan's life, which is great for the reader because you're kind of getting introduced to who Megan was before. And she was basically a bully and she wasn't nice at all. And there ain't nobody who's going to mourn her death. She made her parents' life a misery. Her friends didn't like her but were terrified of being on her burn list. So they went along with whatever she said. And it kind of looks like her friends left her to die because they didn't like her and that they're not nice people themselves. And they've kind of carried on without her being there and um, with this secret. And they're not happy now that she's woken up because they're worried, is she going to remember what happened? So you've kind of got the mystery of what actually happened, though you get kind of it look, you get kind of more on that as the issue goes on. Uh, but I like that whole aspect of it, because like, how are they going to react? But then you've also got Loma and the people back on her planet want the vest back and they're going to come try and find it. So you've got all these different aspects uh, of going on here. And I just really enjoyed this. This was a really, really good read and definitely worth picking up. Uh, $3.99. And uh, if you want something a bit different, this is a good way to go. So the next two books that the line are going to be bringing out next week, we have um, Cave Carson as a cybernetic eye which I'm going to quickly read you the synopsis for these next two books before I go. 
So Cave Carson, issue number one, it says, Cave Carson has done it all, survived countless adventures below the Earth's surface, met the love of his life and got on a cybernetic eye, somehow. After he and his wife, Elaine, Ella, let me get, I got a bit tongue-tied there. After he and his wife, Elaine, set, set their only daughter, Chloe, off to college, Cave as, was ready to become just another mundane member of the surface world. That is until Elaine got sick. Newly widowed, Cave tries to piece his life back together when a knock on the door of his secret underground lab pulls him back into the past that he and Elaine thought they'd buried deep, deep within the earth. A adding to his troubles, Cave must determine if his recent hallucinations and visions are the work of his mind or the mysterious cybernetic eye. So it's written by uh, Gerard Way we, and Ron Rivera, John Rivera with art by Michael Avon uh, Omen. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. That book sounds really good. I, I do really like the sound of that. The, uh, and that comes out next week, the 19th of October. The book after that in November coming out, we have Mother Panic number one. Uh, Meet Violet Page, uh, a celebrity with a bad attitude and a temper to match, who no one suspects of having, like, having everything lying beneath the surface of her outrageous exploits. But Violet isn't just a bored heiress in the upper echelons of Gotham City's elite. Motivated by her traumatic youth, Violet seeks to extract vengeance on the privileged players, peers as the terrified new vigilante known only as Mother Panic. To me, it sounds a bit the same as uh, Renato Jones, um, but we will see. Um, it's a, certainly the Gotham spin on the story is going to be interesting, and whether it we're going to have Batman at all because it's a young animal book. Is Batman even going to be in this world? Uh, is it going to be separate from like the rest of the DC continuity uh, and be its own thing? So is Batman not going to even be in it? Which in which case, why have it in Gotham if you're not going to be like kind of play into stuff? So it's I'm, I'm intrigued by that one. That that one was one I probably was more kind of looking forward to before I read the synopsis. All the others, are kind of the synopsis has dragged me in. But that one, I'm kind of thinking it's pretty much something we've already seen. But we will see. I'm going to give it a go for sure. So, yeah, I, I applaud DC right now, bringing out different kind of books and, and trying different things. And they're doing really well. And they definitely are the kind of book company to be reading right now. So those are my opinions for this video. Um, I will be back at some point over the weekend with my haul video. And then next week, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, I will have a Marvel Ultimate Graphic Novels review as well as another opinions video. So quite a few videos coming up over the next week for me. Uh, thank you, everybody, who's been giving me those beautiful thumbs up and liking my videos and leaving comments. I appreciate it more. And please feel free, if you have opinions on anything I've said today, uh, leave them in the comments below. I love hearing what you think of, of not just what I say, but also on kind of the stuff I've been talking about. So all that leaves to be said is thank you very much for watching. Um, I've been Jason. It is the 11th of October 2016. You've been watching episode two of Comic Book Opinions. Keep reading and bye for now.